Uh, hi guys, my name is Eleanor Sievers. I'm the volunteer program manager at Zion National Park. So during the month of April, we are having seven of our former artists and residents who were volunteers during their time in the park uh, speak to us about their time here, the things they've done since then, um, all different mediums, all different sort of presentation styles. This is a pilot program. Zebeth is our um, very first artist, so we're kicking it off tonight. So without further ado, again, thank you to the volunteers. Thank you to Zebeth for being here and uh, take it away. So my work as an environmentally based artist, I before I, I came to the park, I was creating both two-dimensional and three-dimensional illustrations of all different natural species, working with amphibians, working with insects, um, fungi, botanicals, and creating them as scientifically accurate as I possibly could. So I work with different organizations that are environmentally based. I work with conservationists. I work with natural history museums but I also am an educator as well, teaching workshops and leading eco tours. So there's a lot of different people that I work with um, in, sh in addition to um, showing my work in galleries and in museums here in the United States and abroad. So when I was first contacted, I was so excited. There was such a feeling of anticipation and also curiosity. I have a very strong belief that when when opportunities come, there is a reason for them. And I felt as if I was on the brink of, of a transformation or of a, of a really powerful evolution within my own practice. So I was, I was very excited to see what that would be. In addition to being able to come to a park, I'd only been to Zion once before in my life. So it was a very exciting experience. So when I first arrived in Zion, my, my vantage point was very large. And I imagine that that's true for a lot of people who arrive at Zion. It's, there's a grandeur. And so the first thing that I'm taking in, in addition to just settling into being there for the first time is as, an, as a resident, is the experience of, of this, these huge open spaces these gigantic rock walls that go straight up out of the canyon. Being in this cabin, which, is, which was my house for an entire month, it was isolated. It was, the, it was the, um, the last, being the last building in the canyon. So there was no light that came in there. It was very isolated in a way that allowed me to really be in the natural environment. And it was interesting that the work that I had been doing shifted immediately. I was used to taking specimens or working with specific species and drawing them extremely scientifically, making sure that I was drawing each, each element in each part as well as I could. But this was very different. I wasn't sure if that would happen or not. And it, it shifted immediately. Once I started to, to look through the park and really start to settle in, that feeling of grandeur started to turn into the, the, the treasures that I love to find within nature. So my experience went from this very broad, expansive view of Zion down and down and down into the intimate landscape. And that is really what I wanna share with you today. I included this leaf, um, this aspen leaf, because it was one of the first moments that gave me the inkling of what my artist residency would truly be about. Right across from Angel's Landing, there is a, a little tributary. And within that tributary were these beautiful leaves. And I remember looking at the leaves underneath the water, brown, could barely see them, reaching in the water and pulling them out and holding it up toward the canyon. And what you're actually seeing through this leaf is, is the beautiful Navajo sandstone, that the gorgeous, the top section of that light, light bright portion. And just to hold this leaf up 
and to see the rock formation through this leaf. And as I was holding it up, what I was seeing was color, patterns, light, shadow. And because it was windy that day, I was also watching it blow in the wind. But in addition to that, so the, that's, that's the part of me that is an illustrator, the part that's looking for more of the scientific based, what, what is this species showing me? But as an environmentalist, I was also looking at decomposition. I was looking at cycles. This was a representation of last fall and I was seeing it in February. It's also about the life forces. Also, because it was covered in water, I was also looking at surface tension, possibly even, you know, tiny um, microbes could have been hidden in there that were just too big for my, my large human eyeballs to even be able to see. So there were all of these pieces that when I'm looking at this that are coming to me as well. I started to go hiking, looking at different places. And the amazing thing is, is that there are treasures everywhere. And the closer I looked, the larger those treasures became. And the thing that's interesting is that, you know, getting to see these firsthand is so special. Whether you're seeing them on a screen like this, or you can actually go to the place and see what it is like to understand what is there, who is there, both looking at the rock itself, the water that's falling, the water that has fallen, that has dried, and what the experience is. So one of the things that was very interesting to me when looking at this was not just my own experience of what it was like to be against this, near this rock wall, but also, and the patterns that I was seeing, but also to think way beyond what it's like to be human. What is it like for this rock wall? Not, not in a, perhaps in an anthropomorphic way, but in the best way that I as a human know how to experience. What is it like to be Navajo sandstone? And they become a witness, a witness of the history and of the landscape. They understand this land far more than anyone who is living within these, this hundred year period could possibly understand. What is it this Navajo sandstone knows? And then to think about this moment, the, the algae that's able to, to blossom within these little streaks, the, 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 um, the minerals that are able to seep out through that water and, and, and find the ability to leave the rock and, and, and cascade down and stain those rock walls. The animals that survive on that little drip of water the plants that are able to make it just because that's there. It's so curious to me how the ecosystem works because of all that is there. Anywhere you look, there is thriving and surviving in nature. It's all there. As you're walking through it, and what's really interesting to me is that there is, there is an intersection between you being in that environment and everything that is around you. And it is an extremely special moment that will never happen again. And just to recognize and acknowledge that moment that's happening, the witnessing that I am doing or that you are doing when you're on that walk, and everything else that is, that is coming together at the same moment, which will never be the same again. Even every single time you go back to that place, it will be different because the temperature is different. The time of year is different. The species that are there, the other people that are there are different. So there's a preciousness. And anytime I see a treasure, you know, these lichen growing, even if they take hundreds of years to get there, there may be a little bug that's running across them. 
and to say, that is why I did this hike. That is why I'm here. It was to see this bug, to witness its existence in this moment. That is worth it for me to have taken this journey. I'm also will be very curious to hear what, what you have experienced about the park um, that may be special, um, that is not in these images, that maybe as volunteers, you may be able to see, or as visitors, that I may never have known or could never known because of your experience there and how you live out the park. So I'll be curious to hear about that as well. It's also important to, um, for me to connect the understanding that within the, the mass extinction that is happening on our planet at this time, as an environmental artist, my goal is to help people see. And I truly believe that the more that we witness and the more that we see, the more there is an opportunity for understanding and connection. And through connection is truly where preservation begins. That the more that we see and the more that we appreciate, the more that there is a desire to save what we have. There is so much on this planet that, that we don't understand what it, its purpose is and how it affects science. You know, we're, we're dealing with so many, um, you know, creations of different vaccines and, and different, um, different pieces that fit together that affect humans. And many of those come from plants. Many of those come from so many different species. And the animals that go extinct that we have never seen, that we've never even heard of, it is easier to be able to let them go, even though they may be just as important as the pets that we have in our houses, as the, as the plants that we grow um, and that we, that we tend to, that we care so much about, they could be even more important than that but they can disappear without us even knowing, but also without us caring because we don't know of their existence. So my artwork is very much about how to see what is underfoot. We're so interested in what's happening out in space and to go to Mars and different places, which is wonderful and amazing, but there is so much happening underfoot that is unseen. While I was in the park, I was, I was venturing down and into um, the Virgin River as, a, as, a, um, as an artist in residence, I had the, the incredible ability to, to go through the park as a ranger. So there were many places that I was able to visit um, and, and explore. Anyway, so this one day I went down to, to the riverbed and as I was walking along, there was this, this tiny, tiny section that days, weeks before there had been flooding, also speaking of a little history, but it hadn't rained in a while. And, and there had been all of these um, little pools that had created from the tributaries that had been created from the flooding. So the, the river had subsided and these small pools were, were standing water. And in that standing water, there had just been a little bit of oil from the ground, just a, just a little bit of a natural seep that had come up to the surface and had coated the water. These images were taken from those tiny pools. They may not have been more than a couple of feet in diameter, but to me, they were like solar systems. As, as amazing as looking at a, a cat's eye nebula to be able to see these extraordinary colors dancing across the surface of water, not even to speak of what was underneath the water, but actually separating me a little bit from all of that, the ecosystem going on underneath and giving me just the surface was plenty. 
And as I was viewing each of these and looking at the extraordinary patterns and colors that was created, I was so inspired by this. I ended up taking around 400 photographs of this very small area. I spent all day there and I ended up going back for dinner and then returning just before it got dark. And I ended up taking about a thousand photographs that day. And from those photographs ended up narrowing down um, to, to the images that I actually, as an artist, were able to view. And these are just a couple of those. These two images were, were not just the most important to me, but ended up um, spurring a lot of my, a lot of my um, work. So particularly the one on the left. So in addition to being amazed by the colors and patterns, if you look very carefully, you can see there is a very interesting pattern within the, I wonder if I can, yeah, so I can show you. So there's this X pattern that goes right across. And I was looking at that and I was thinking, that looks like a trail. And sure enough, I, I was able to go into the Zion National Park library and actually study up on what could this be and, um, and to narrow it down to the species. And because it was so lightweight, I imagined that it was an insect because the, the, um, the prints, the footprints were so close together I was imagining that it was a rather small insect and I ended up studying the foot patterns. So I was looking at all of the patterns and the insects that would be both there in February, but also would be light enough to walk across the surface tension of the water. And it turned out that it was a small weevil. And what was really interesting to me, two things, first of all, that this weevil was so lightweight. It's such a different experience than being human. And it's one of the things that I really enjoy. In my work, I tend to draw species that are very different than myself. Um, what I am not familiar with and can barely imagine is having an exoskeleton. And to be light enough to race across oil this oil slick. And then to imagine its, its feet covered in oil and, and what that experience must have been like for better, for worse. Is that something it deals with all the time? Is it something that was, was painful? And if, if insects even experience pain as we do? So that was one of the most amazing experiences that I had down there and really expanded out my understanding. So. It was fascinating to me. And then also to see the history of what's left behind uh, was fascinating to me as well. And then if you look to the image on the right, if you look closely, I'm hoping that you can see a figure. This feels like um, this was the head that I saw of the figure, these being the shoulders, and then this being the legs and the body. And I imagined that this back here, this line across, really kind of looked like mountains as if it was a landscape. And I named this the Traveler. And it became a representation of my journey. I'm very aware of when, of when journeys begin. My residency started about a week before I left Oregon, which is where I live. And I start to notice my artistic mind and the residency calling and them joining together. And when I saw this image, it felt like this was the traveler that, that um, I was and had become during this, during this time. So it was a very special piece to me and I, I don't get to show it to very many people. So the work um, that I created, there were two pieces, two bodies of work that I created. One was of the three-dimensional insects. Um, and then the second piece, which is what I'm showing here and talking to you about today, is um, the piece that is actually in the permanent collection at Zion National Park. And this piece is titled Snippets. 
And you can see some of the images that I went through and showed you in this piece. And to me, this piece is really, it's really an invitation to be a part of the landscape. It's the opportunity to be a witness and to possibly change pace. So often there are distractions. We go, we go at such speed. Um, you know, as I'm sure you're familiar with, so many visitors that come to these incredible places. You know, William Taft knew what he was doing and created this sanctuary that, that people could visit that would be protected. But so many only have three hours to see it, two days to view it come from other countries just to have that moment. But what happens when we slow down? The difference between trail running and just sitting and observing one spot, even one spot that happens every single day. So in this piece, as I said, it's an invitation to look at the intimate landscape and my hope through my artwork is to create connection, is to create engagement and to create stewardship, to protect the earth, to protect the individual species, those that cannot speak for themselves in the, within the human realm that we have the ability to create all of these decisions and policies that we make sure that they have voice and that they have protection and that the land that they need so that we can all live on the planet together, they can have their ecosystems that are thriving so that we can thrive in addition to them. On my website, because I'm an educator, I also have my workshops that I teach. I also have um, all the artwork that I created during that time and then pieces that I have created since so you can always look through, look through my work and that speaks more to um, my overall style. So thank you so much. It was really nice to share this with all of you and I hope that you enjoyed it. One of the things about being a volunteer at the park is that you will know the park better than anyone that comes to visit. Visitors have something that you won't have. They have fresh eyes which is really, really exciting. The more that you can learn about their fresh eyes, especially people from other countries, huge opportunity, but they will never be able to see what you see. And the energy that you have by your experience in the park will, I believe, change the way they view the park. Just the way you tell them where a trailhead is. You know, even the littlest thing like, Oh, there's a really special pond that's there. Not a lot of people see it. Don't forget that. You know, anything that you experience will change their, their, the way that they see. Because I made sure to leave the cabin every night and go sit out on the porch, you know, no light and just sit in the darkness. And what happened is that I was facing, let's see, it would be the um, western side of the canyon. I'm facing the western side of the canyon. And then all of a sudden, this sliver of white just coated the top of the canyon. And it started to move down the canyon and move down the canyon. And the illumination of the canyon just kept going down and down and down. And then the white light got to the bottom of the canyon, right? Where all the cottonwoods are and started to move toward me. It was as if it was coming to find me, right? And it's moving toward me and moving toward me. And I was like, oh my God, there's the space between. Like, who would have thought that experience would happen? The space between as it's closing in and closing in. And then the next thing I know, my toes are in, in moonlight and then my legs are in moonlight and then my, my entire body and my cabin is in moonlight. And I turn around and I look and there's the moon like <laughs> just peeking over the Eastern side. Being out in that darkness, man, is it rewarding.
Yeah, there's something about process, you know, and being, if it's, I mean, I don't think it's possible to be invisible in a landscape, but um, to be able to really just take a step back, really let, you know, let things unfold around you and to, mm -hmm. you know, the experience of um, smelling and hearing and just having a full, a full experience of how it feels to be to be there and what what happens without without human stomping you know all of the things that that nature tends to shy away from um but also you know i was thinking about what it's like to be a tree and how um you know how how stationary they are um and and to be so mobile and to sit down for a little bit and just experience that that stationariness and um, and what what can happen, you know, during that time. Well, we are right at seven o'clock. I um, I I'm happy to stay on for for a few more minutes. I you know I um I, I could answer another question if we have it, but I also want to be you know respectful of of your time as well. Is there another burning question, or is everybody you know ready? <laughs> Yeah, I'm just delighted. It's um, it's such a treat to to speak with all of you. Thank you again for all of the work that you do. Thank you for being here tonight and listening. It's, it was really very special to share with you tonight. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Ziba. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. You can go to my website if you want to if you want to learn about workshops or you know just be on my mailing list. You can hear about all the things I'm doing. Ziba, if you had like this is sort of, sort of corny, but like if you had one piece of advice or one tip you could give mm. another artist in residence, what would you, I know it's hard to oh, distill that into like one catchphrase. But. I think that if I were to take the learning from my experience and filter it into a statement, I would say, be with what is. I really needed to let the spirit of artist residency speak loudly over um, any expectation I had, any um, knowledge that I believed about myself, um, any desires, any, you know, there was a real, there was a real um, acceptance piece of just letting it unfold. And um, to, to tell you, I, I'll go into this a little bit deeper. So at the time I was identifying myself not as a nature illustrator, but as an insect illustrator, because most of my works, you know, similar to, um, you know, the piece behind me, I was really pretty focused on, on doing uh, insect species, um, which is why the weevil was so exciting. Um, <laughs> It was one of the few ones that was out in, in February. I was like, oh, tracks, thank goodness. Um, but I, I was expecting to see a bunch of insects. I'm like, I'm an insect illustrator. I'm going to go to Zion. I'm going to illustrate insects. That's my plan, right? And I got there in February and the insects were not around. I mean, I, I think I saw three, including the, the non-existent weevil. I saw three beetles. <laughs> Um, I saw a tiger beetle, I saw a, um, I think it was a blister beetle, and then, you know, that weevil. And I panicked in a very calm way of like, <laughs> well, why am I here? And that was a really important question. It was, if not that, then what? And um, I just, I was, I was beautifully lost. And I think that's something that is so exciting about an artist residency. Um, it opened up huge questions for me. And I really needed to ask my practice within the nurturing of artist residency. Why am I here? Like, I know that I would not have been accepted and brought here in February. I know without there being a reason for me to be here right now. And what ended up happening, which is a whole nother lecture, is that um, I was taking all of these photographs 
And because of the photographs that I was taking, it, it ended up evolving my artwork from doing more scientific illustration into, um, into creating incredible species. And the, the artist residency at Zion National Park gave that to me, period. That would not have happened without it. And it wouldn't have happened without, without, um, without the questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway. Well, well, thank you again. Seriously, this has been a, a great, great night. <laughs> you are a, most welcome. A wonderful kickoff to our, our month long foray into uh, former artists and residents. Seriously, yeah. this is really appreciated the, the two way nature of this, which was all you. So thanks. Yeah, you're so welcome. You're so welcome. All right, everybody. Well, I hope you have a wonderful night. Go enjoy one of my favorite parks. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, hopefully I will, uh, I will see all of you in the future. Yeah, I hope so.